Okay, let's do an example problem for how to balance redox equations using the half reaction method in acidic solution. We're going to be balancing this equation right here. Now, if this is your first time learning this stuff, I recommend you start with my intro video on the topic and then you can come back here for some practice. These are the steps that we use to balance the equation. I talked through these in the introductory video. I like to think that we can kind of break these steps down into three stages. In the first stage, we determine oxidation numbers for the elements and we look at how the oxidation numbers change. Then in the second stage, we write half reactions and we balance each half reaction for atoms and for charge. Then in the third and last stage, we put the half reactions together. Okay, so let's balance this equation. We'll go one step at a time. First, we're gonna determine the oxidation numbers for the atoms in this equation using these rules. Cr2, O7, two minus, it's a polyatomic ion. So that means that the oxidation numbers here are gonna add up to the ion charge. Oxygen is usually minus two, and we have seven oxygens here. So I'm gonna do minus two times seven, which is gonna give us a total of minus 14. Now, CR's oxidation number has to add together with oxygens to give me the ion charge, which is minus two here. So that means that CR's oxidation number is going to be plus 12, plus 12, minus 14, equals minus two. We have two chromiums, two CRs. So this plus 12 has to be divided between those two. So I'm gonna do plus 12 divided by two is going to give me an oxidation number of plus six for each one of the chromiums. Okay, the other ones, they're easier. I one minus here is a monatomic ion, so its oxidation number is the same as its ion charge. So it's gonna be minus one. Cr3 plus here is another one of these monatomic ions, so its oxidation number is going to be plus three, the same as its ion charge. And then over here, I2 is just an element by itself. It's just iodine. We have two iodine atoms connected together. That's what the two is. But nonetheless, there are no other elements there. It's just iodine. So it is going to have an oxidation number of zero. So these are the oxidation numbers for the elements in this equation. Step two, figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. We're gonna look at the changes in oxidation numbers to figure this out. Okay, chromium here is plus six on this side of the equation, and it's plus three over on this side. So that means that its oxidation number is going down. When an element's oxidation number goes down, that means that it is undergoing reduction. It means that chromium here is being reduced from plus six down to plus three. Now oxygen's here, oxygen doesn't exist on the other side of the equation right just yet because we haven't balanced it. So we're not gonna have to worry about oxygen. We'll put that in later. Now we'll move to I1 minus iodide. Iodide is minus one here and then it's zero here. So iodides, its oxidation number is going up from minus one to zero. So that means that it is undergoing oxidation with a rise in its oxidation number. So iodide is being oxidized from minus one to zero. So chromium's being reduced, iodide's being oxidized. Step three, write the half reactions. Okay, the half reaction for oxidation. Iodide, I1 minus here is what's getting oxidized. So on the left side of the equation, it's I minus, then we got the arrow, and on the right side of the equation, it is I2. So iodide, I1 minus here, is actually getting oxidized to elemental iodine. So it's iodide here and it's iodine over here, but don't worry about that too much. Now for reduction, chromium is getting reduced. So on the left side of the equation, we're gonna have Cr, two, O, seven, two minus. Then we got our arrow. And then on the right side of the equation, it's gonna be Cr, three plus. 
So these are our two half reactions for oxidation and reduction. Now we're going to balance each one of them for atoms and for charge. We'll start with the reduction half reaction and then we'll balance the oxidation half reaction. We're going to start by balancing the atoms here. Okay, first we're going to balance the atoms other than O and H. So let's take stock of the atoms that we have on each side of the equation. Okay, we have two chromiums on this side and we have seven oxygens. Over on this side, we only have one chromium and we don't have any oxygens at all. So the first thing that I'm gonna to do to balance this equation is I'm gonna put a two in front of the CR here, two. So now instead of having one CR, I have two. The chromiums balance. Now let's move on to the oxygens, which don't currently balance. So I got seven oxygens here and I got zero oxygens here. In order to balance these oxygens, I'm gonna add H2O. Each H2O molecule has one oxygen atom. Okay, so H2O here, here it is. And I need seven oxygens. So I'm gonna add seven H2O to this side. That's gonna give me my seven times one, my seven oxygens that I need, so now these balance. But that introduces hydrogen. Now I have a new element here, seven times two hydrogens, 14 hydrogens, and I don't have any hydrogens on this side. So what I'm gonna to do to balance the hydrogens on this side is I'm gonna add H pluses to this side. How many? Well, I got 14 here, so I'm gonna add 14 H plus over here, so now I have 14 hydrogens on both sides. Now, let me talk about this H plus really quickly. You know how I keep saying that we're balancing this in acidic solution? Well, I'm adding this H plus here because of that, right? Because H pluses make things more acidic. If I were balancing this in basic solution, I'd have to be adding OH minuses in here as well. It's a little trickier, I got a video on that. But the main point is, because we're balancing this in acidic solution, I'm adding these H pluses to balance out the hydrogens on this side. Anyway, now we've got our chromiums, our oxygens, and our hydrogens balanced. The atoms all look good. So now it's time to balance this equation for charge. Let's divide this equation in half to figure out the charges on both sides. Okay, over here I have 14 H plus. Each one of them have charge one plus, so I've got plus 14 over here. And then I have this polyatomic ion with a charge of two minus. So I've got plus 14 minus two equals plus 12 of charge over here on this side. Then on this side, I got my CR3 plus and I got two of those. So I got a total of plus six over here. Now I need for these to balance. How am I gonna do that? Well, I can lower the charge of one side by adding electrons to it. If I can lower this by six points, then they can both be plus six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add six electrons, six E minus to this side. Each one of these electrons has one negative charge. So I'm gonna do plus 12 minus six for the charge of the electrons gives me plus six. Plus six over here, plus six over here, the charge is balanced. So my reduction half reaction looks good. Now I'm gonna to need to uh, balance the atoms and the charges for my oxidation half reaction. Let's balance the atoms here. I put these two steps together because there's not a whole lot of balancing we've gotta do here. All right, the only element that we have to worry about here is iodine. We have one of them on this side of the equation, we have two here. So what are we gonna to do to balance this out? I'm just gonna put a two in front of the I minus. So now instead of having one, we have two. Two atoms on both sides of the equation. Now charge. Let's look at charge on both sides here. I've got two I minuses, each have a charge of one minus. So I got minus two on this side, and then I don't have any charge here, so I have zero. In order to get these to balance, I have to lower the charge on this side. I wanna get it down to negative two. So I'm gonna add two electrons, so I have zero, minus two equals minus two, add these electrons and the charges balance. Now that the oxidation half reaction is balanced for atoms and charge, 
I'm ready to put it back together, or at least start putting it back together with a reduction half reaction. Let's look at how to do that. In order to put these two half reactions together, we have to have the same number of electrons in both of them. In the oxidation half reaction right now, we have two electrons. In the reduction half reaction, we have six electrons. So they're not the same, that's not gonna work. In order to make it good, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply one or both of the half reactions by some number to make the electrons equal in both of them. Well, all we're gonna have to do is multiply the oxidation half reaction by three, because then we'll have two electrons times three, which will give us six electrons, the same as down here. I'm gonna put these parentheses around here. I'm gonna multiply this by three, not two, there we go, by three, <laughs> such a bad three. Multiply this whole reaction by three, just kind of like we're distributing it in, in a math problem. Okay, and so we're gonna have three times two I minus, which is gonna give us six I minus, then we've got the arrow, then three times I two, so we're gonna get three I two, and then we're gonna do three times the uh, two electrons, which is gonna give us six electrons. So this is our new oxidation equation, or our new oxidation half reaction. And now you can see that we've got six, six electrons here, six electrons here, so now we're ready to start combining them. So now we're gonna add the half reactions, canceling out stuff that appears on both sides of the arrow. So here's how we add these half reactions. I'm gonna start with everything on the left side of the arrow for both of these equations. I'll start up here. 6i minus, 6i minus, and now I'm gonna go down here for everything on the left side of the arrow for this reaction. So I've got my 6i minus plus, plus 6e minus, plus 14h plus, plus cr 2 minus. Now I got the arrow, there's the arrow, and now I do everything on the right of the arrow for both of the equations. So up here I've got three I2 plus six electrons plus two Cr3 plus plus seven H2O. Now here it says that we're gonna be canceling out stuff that appears on both sides of the arrow. What appears on both sides of the arrow? Well, we got, the, uh, we got the electrons here. Six electrons here, six electrons here. Let's cancel them out. And now what we're gonna do is just rewrite this equation, make it look a little bit nicer by getting rid of those electrons that were on both sides. And this is our final equation after we've added these two together. The last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna check it for balance to make sure we did everything right. I feel pretty good about our work, but let's just double check to make sure everything balances. Okay, on this side of the equation, 6i, I've got six of these, hydrogen H14, chromium Cr, I have Cr2, so I got two of those, and then O7, seven oxygens. Over on this side, iodines, three times two is six, hydrogens, seven times two, 14, chromium, two, CRs, and finally oxygen, seven times one. I got seven. So six, 14, two, seven. Perfect, my atoms balance. Now let's make sure that charges balance. I will divide the equation into two halves. Charges for over here, six I one minus. So that's gonna give me minus six. Then I have 14 H plus, plus 14, and then I have one Cr2O7 with a charge of two minus, minus two. I'm gonna add these up and I get plus six. Over here, the only thing that's charged is Cr3 plus, and I have two of those. So two times three plus is gonna give me six plus. This is great. My atoms balance, my charges balance, plus six on both sides, I've done this completely correctly. So that's how we balance a redox equation in acidic solution using these steps. If this still doesn't quite feel second nature to you, just keep working examples, I promise. It will make sense and it will become very, very easy.